just drifted alarmingly in the bedding was, you know, fancy in the morning it continued to drift. It was laid on the on the exchanges to, to lose. It was something you'd see in a, in a Dick Francis novel, Charles Bones. The ground is soft, it's not, it's oh, not. it's heavy. Soft on time, so it's, it's, it's heavy. Okay. Hello and welcome to the Bar Stewards Inquiry Sunday Sermon. And joining me, as always, to go through uh, this week's events, the weekend's review, and other uh, shit shows uh, that, that are around British racing and Irish racing right now, uh, are John Lang and Chris. Good Hello. evening. Hello. Hello, indeed. Right, chaps, before we get on to the show and the review, how have we both got on punting this weekend? Personally, how are we getting on punting of late? What, what, what's the score, Chris? What, how are you getting on? Well, I, I, I had one sort of serious bet because I wouldn't embarrass myself by calling any I bet serious, but what, what a larger stake bet uh, yesterday. I did bet Dirty M at Asta only on the basis that I thought, well, you know, why is he bringing a seemingly moderate horse over? It looked pretty strong in the market for most of the morning, but then my arse fell out when I think it drifted to seven to four on the exchanges at sort of hour and a half before the race, but shortened up markedly. And, and that sort of one, as you would hope Emmett uh, would. So I, I kind of put a nail in it after that. I wasn't going to sort of chance my luck too much. So, so yes, a, a, a winning day in quotes, but it wouldn't buy a bag of Skittles, unfortunately. So, yeah, not too bad. OK, John? It's basically boring the arse off me. <laughs> it, it's the same money going backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah, it's like swapping it for a bit, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it can't, can't, kind of is a bit, isn't it? It's sort of, yeah, two steps forward. If you're lucky, sort of one and a half steps back and then another half a step back and then a quarter of a step forward. And you just sort of look back and you're sort of where you, you or it's almost kind of a, a, a cheap thrill that kind of sort of pays for itself at best. You never seem to, well, I never seem to be able to kick clear and have a really significant bet on a good price one that boots you clear so that, you know, you can have a few losers. Always seem to be running on the spot almost at best. Yeah, it's, I mean, Saturday and everything else sums it up really. It's like, for me, it's on the year. I've not had a good year, so you find yourself chasing your tail some days in in that you not not being irresponsible as I'm in too much on, but you you know, but you, you, I, I'm always starting off behind. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's yeah. it's like after after four races played, it's you know, I'm 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 forty three for six, <laughs> yeah. and the ball's moving about like a facing Jimmy Anderson under cloud. Yeah. Ball's bollocks. <laughs> So, so, I'm finding myself wishing I'd agreed to go on Gogglebox four years ago because I might have gone in right into the jungle this year and I'd have had a bit warmer weather anyway. Yeah, and then you, yeah. then you, then you could have got uh, you got sacked with Hancock, John. Yeah. Well, I could have been <laughs> a campfire or something, couldn't I? That would have lightened it up a bit. <laughs> I thought, I thought the highlight for me yesterday, and I, I don't know whether it's focus, was Nicky Henderson's hat, which has caused some yeah. constant consternation uh, on Twitter. It was an extraordinary uh, thing, wasn't it? I don't know whether you saw it. It was like a sort of a, an Aunt Bessie's sort of um, giant uh, Yorkshire. I thought they photoshopped it, Chris. I thought they were doing a carving on you. <laughs> it, it could be. I thought there was gravy in the in the brim at one point. I thought, I hope it doesn't fucking rain. There'd be batter everywhere, wouldn't there? It was a, an extraordinary thing. But so, somebody pointed out to me, I, I don't know whether it was in jest or not, but they said it was a Peter O'Sullivan's old hat, and I do remember him wearing a, a similar piece of headgear. So, so th there may be some truth in that, but either way, it looked absolutely horrible. Peter O'Sullivan's hat. I, I, you don't like Peter O'Sullivan, do you? Well, I, I have sort of uh, by proxy some experience of his haughtiness. I mean, many, many moons ago, I must be what, 25, 30 years ago, uh, a girl I used to knock around with, her dad had an idea to set up uh, the first kind of uh, betting industry trade show, which I think has been, you know, renamed many times. But he had this idea and he got a few quid together and, and he started writing to, 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 to the industry and they said, yeah, go on, we'll have a, a sort of a stall there, etc. And he thought it'd be a good idea to, to, to contact Peter O'Sullivan and uh, sort of have him as a sort of guest of honour opening the event. So, you know, so he wrote him a nice letter and said, look, dear, dear Peter, da, 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 
got this idea, it'd be good for racing, you know, good for betting, blah, blah, blah. You know, we'll, we'll send a car down to collect you. We'll give you a smashing lunch and pay your, pay your out-of-pocket expenses on the day and there'll be a car to sort of take you back home to London when you're done. And he wrote this letter and he thought, oh, this, I'm sure he'll, he'll come aboard. And within a couple of days, he had this snotty handwritten letter from, from Peter O'Sullivan uh, sort of chastising him uh, for not addressing him in the manner... Uh, that the Queen had sort of, um, what's the word, um, bestowed on him by, by, you know, by knighting him. And, and because he hadn't addressed him <coughs> as Sir Peter O'Sullivan, he, he wasn't going to waste his time with people who didn't recognise the significance of this, you know, this honorific bestowed on him. Uh, and, you know, it was a really ungracious, just a kind of a really shabby response. I mean, all he needed to have done was sort of write back and say, look, I'm busy, you know, thanks very much, but it's not for me. But no, he, he wrote this sort of nasty letter. And, and at the end of it, when he signed Sir Peter, so he underlined it several times in, you know, in, in, in fountain pen to, to sort of drive home the point that he was Sir Peter and not old Peter. So uh, on that basis, I, I just thought, Ooh, what a shitty thing to do. But, but I'm sure he was lovely to to everyone else, but not to this guy. Mm, interesting story. Sir Peter O'Sullivan, the voice of racing, John. Sounds like he came from the same biscuit tin as Julian Wilson. I don't, don't know whether they actually got on, you know, because Julian Wilson wasn't particularly complimentary about him in his uh, autobiography. Yeah. He, he always felt he stitched him up a bit over his retirement date. Did, did Julian Wilson not, I mean, because they write these things in advance, I, I could be completely wrong here, but did Julian Wilson not pen O'Sullivan's obituary in I don't know, the Times or something? I, I seem to remember vaguely there was some comment of what a, a slightly mean and peevish sort of obituary. It was sort of complimentary, but he got a few digs in the in the ribs. At her. So so I think that's right. I, I don't think that they were... It sounds like work of Wizzle on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? When the upper classes fall out, it's quite fun to watch. <laughs> it, is, it is actually the old hoity toities. Um, right, we're going to get on to the review of the weekend. Yesterday, saw the Hennessy at Newbury and the Fighting Fifth at Newcastle, which has certainly uh, uh, caused debate on Twitter regarding how good Constitution Hill is. So we'll get on to that. We must get onto that straight away. We'll look at we'll look at Newcastle first of all. Apart from probably the rehearsal chase, which was won by Long Press, John, the card wasn't much to really to, to go at, barring the fighting fifth and the rehearsal. Um, we'll talk about Long Press. Might disagree with you. <laughs> well, Brian Ellison. You know, nice to see him back in the winners at his uh, at where he loves to have winners. He'll do anything for winners at Newcastle. Will 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 the airy gorilla at Malton? Um, oh, for winners. So it I, I was pleasing for, for me to see that. Don't mind Brian having winners, even though I'm not backing him. Uh, though Chris would turn around and say, "Fuck him." And <laughs> <laughs> if Chris isn't on them, fuck them all. Yeah, fuck them all. So anyway, we've gone to the rehearsal chase, and obviously, long press. This this was an absolutely brilliant race. There's been renewals of this in sort of recent times that have probably not not ran looked at this standard. So fair play to the Wicked Witch uh, for running long press because this is what brought the pizzazz <coughs> energy into the race, and it looks absolutely cock solid form as cock solid as you could ever get. I think in terms of a of a of a handicap chase at this time of year, especially this is solid. And what what a weight carrying performance this was, John from Long Press. I thought it was tremendous. This because I mean he's still cruising like the second last, wasn't he? Mm. You know, I mean, really impressive. I, I think. To win a handicap of 164 is tremendous. And then when you take into account of his weight, I mean, seriously in the form of an into overdrive. And uh, a horse that probably looks as though it can go on a bit more this year in Happy Go Lucky. No one wants anything about the resurgent Brian Ellison horse in force. But again, great Yorkshire chase winner returning to form. It looks very, very solid, doesn't it? It does. I mean, in, into overdrive, jumped really well and and did what he normally does. And, and basically, he just couldn't... At a crucial point, I think, from sort of three out to two out-ish, he just couldn't go with long press and happy go lucky. And I, but then he obviously made made late leeway. And I think that was a brilliant try. I don't know if connections are what they're planning, 
But into overdrive, that was a perfect trial for me for the Kim Muir at Cheltenham, where they can get Jamie Hamilton off and then get a really good am- amateur on. But, you know, the, the, the three mile, is it three mile two, the Kim Muir? Um, I think that's perfect for him. And the fact that the bookies have made him 12 to 1 co favourite for that into overdrive, I think that's a compliment. And, and I do think if he goes there and connections say, yes, this is where we're going to aim him at, he's going to start. Five to one, nine to two favourite for that. Even I know the Irish might have something to say about that, but I generally think that's really, really strong form. The rehearsal chase, and um, it'll take some it's beating. Up, isn't it? it is, it is. You won't get twelve to one on the day, so. But uh, ring Mark Walford up, ask him what he's doing. Is he, you know, find find out, folks. Um, Lom Press they make five to one for the King George. I think that if Venetia decides that's where he's going to go. I would back him at five to one. I think he's better than Brave Man's game. I think he's better than Hitman. And yes, five to one. Yes, please. But obviously, I'd, I'm not so sure that that's where they're going to go with him. But if they do, or you know, the five to one is 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 going to look huge. I think uh, for Lom Press, who I think he's a really serious, serious uh, potential Gold Cup horse as well. Um, I, you know, real, real, real good to have uh, this side of the pond for once to have serious challenges to win, win uh, the blue ribbon in March. Okay, we'll go to the fighting fifth. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> constitutional. Obviously, lots to talk about it, and you know, I've I've read lots of people's thoughts on it. I I, I like doing that because like, it's nice to get different. You got a certain brigade that say, well, what's he beaten this and uh, and then you get another, you get another brigade that say, well, yeah, he's done. He's basically done two ridiculous fast times. Broke the course record, you know, with his cock out at Newcastle and 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 Cheltenham again ridiculously fast. So th- this is this is like this is this is really on the, uh, from a time perspective, this has to be a very 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 good hurdler. However, and uh, there is a caveat here: the fact that Epiton, I felt, I thought, I thought she was very keen. Not so asleep, he was very keen and not ridden to best advantage. He's 10 now. If you put the ratings into context, and I know it's difficult sometimes to rate some races because whatever you judge the race on, you can fudge it at different levels of... You can either make constitutional ridiculous or you could make constitutional average. So I went on the premise that Epiton had run... She'd run 10, £10 pound below her official rating. I don't think Aiden, Aiden was on... Aiden was hard on her. At any point, and I also she bundled the second last. She was a bit keen. So if you if you do a simple rate the race for Epiton, saying that she's ran to one four four on that occasion, it brings constitutional out one six five. Now there'll be some people out there saying, well, that's a load of rubbish. Um, you know, bloody blah, blah, blah. But that brings Void of Revin at one hundred and thirty three, who is officially rated at one hundred and thirty three. Yeah. So that makes common sense. So. Whilst the, the clock went, and 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 I thought it was impressive because the fact that he had to make his own running, it's never easy to do. You know, you, you've got to do it yourself. And then people say, well, he's out on his own. No, but the difference is when you get a lead into a race, then you you can, it's like it's like the Tour de France. You know, you, you don't you don't make all in, in the Tour de France. You have riders helping you, getting the slipstream, and then you quick and pass them. You know, it, it's, it's, it's the same with racing. That's why so many trainers like to take a lead. So I think Mekinor was also impressive. It was another string to his bow that it didn't matter. He's just going to get on with it and, and blast clear. So he's, he's, a, he's a very slick hurdler. He, he's got it all, really. He's, he's very excited. But, John, I'm not so sure that I've seen some comparisons to some great hurdlers in the past. Surely you've got, whilst you've done it on the clock, you've done it impressively as to know what the horse is. He's got to go and do it, though, hasn't he? He's got to go and do it. Um, but... He couldn't really have done what he's done up to now any more impressively, could he? No, 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 you, you can't, you can't knock it. You, you can't crab what he's done. You can take that one six five rate in that, coincidentally, that's what I gave him yesterday um, on pure performance. But then you've got to allow for the fact he's basically completely the last quarter of man he's on time, hasn't he? Um, well, yes, yes. No, he, 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 visually, he could do a lot better than that. Many of our Irish fans say that, that we overrate our horses. You'd agree with that, wouldn't you? Mm. I mean, like the Voiderev argument. So according to the, the racing rag, they've got him running down 142. I don't see any reason why, why at 10 years old, he would run £9. No, 
above his official rate. It doesn't make any sense. So they're already they're already nine to I before you even start for me. But anyway, that that's that, that that's that's where I'm, we're at. I mean the racing post rate in the hundred and seventy six is crazy, really. You know, say every time how how she pulls only run a pound below her official mark, you know, and, and same with not so sleepy. I just think that's crazy stuff. But I think there's there's every reason to think Constitution Hill can hit that sort of figure. Definitely, de- de- definitely. The, the the clock says it. The, and yeah. I mean, he's unexposed enough to in, to improve, isn't he? You know, let's be fair. I mean, he's no miles on the clock. No, it, it's it's impressive. For, I mean, you wouldn't think that this horse has had uh, one point to point, which he, he got beat in, um, and four races under rules. You just wouldn't think that in I mean, terms of... Just imagine what it'd be like when he goes over the big black ones, because everything he does over hurdles, I'm sure, is a bonus. I think you're right. I do, I think. I, 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 I think <laughs> the, old, the old national cliche. Somewhere on his back, I think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we've summed it up quite well. I think that the, the key, we constantly get excited, don't Not go back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, well, the thing is, you know what Endo's like? He's gonna. He'll handpick his races between now and Cheltenham. He'll look. He'll look at the competition. If something extremely serious uh, is is declared, or he's gonna, he'll he'll ring them up. You running yours? If it's a, you know, if it's a serious Irish challenge or whatever, you know, he, he'll he'll probably swerve it, and he'll want to turn up at seven on one and that kind of thing. Well, this could be a wonderful, wonderful horse that none of us can get a bet on for three years. Yeah. You just have to sit and watch it. Yeah. yeah. Fred, uh, with, with with his uh, senile trainer going even more senile uh, these days, you know. It, it, it amps like that, yeah. Yeah. It's, it it kind of, it's going to be worse than Shishkin's campaign, you know. And, and uh, yeah, that's the thing. He, he turned into this, you know, he, he, wrap them in cotton wool, don't risk them, don't, don't run them. You know, ooh, it, it's, it's good to soft. Is there any good in there? You know, that kind of thing. What's he going to wear at Cheltenham? Is that what he pads its knickers? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's done no Sullivan's rushing out. So who knows? We end up and a, and a pile of Hendrix. Right. Pat, Pat Taff thong. <laughs> <laughs> it might be Catherine Fry's thong now. If he wins the raffle. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, you got you got you you he's got to listen to the show for the for the for, for the raffle for the Christmas raffle for the Fry thong. On to you. Are you sure it's not John's? <laughs> well, 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 that's Ooh. it. We, we, we can stitch listeners up. That. Yeah, we can, we can say it's fries, and it's just not. It's it, it's it's one that that John's put on. Anyway, <laughs> all, all that fucking pate as well stuff. Oh, <laughs> nice oh, yeah. Even even buds stuck to it. Yeah. Yellow at the front, brown at the back. Reverse it, and then every other day, horrible. <laughs> Uh, oh, let's hope you're not eating while listening to this. Let's hope <laughs> you're not into your tea right now. As we go to Newbury, the uh, the John Frankham novices chase so McFabulous beat a, a poor jump in Time Hill. Not really formed to go to bed with John. Good shout from Ender. I thought he called that. He did call it Neville Ender on Friday's show. He said that Time Hill wasn't as good a jumper and he was absolutely bang on. Hopefully you that listened will be rewarded with your two to one nine or four roughly at the off with McFabulous. He did he did out jump time hill. The 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 quote from Unibet for the uh Brown advisory of seven to one was embarrassing. Um he's sixteen to one uh, generally available and I think that's more about right, John in tune with, with what's in that race. So not nothing really to add. It's it's, it's difficult to rate a horse that has out jumped a horse that won't appear of offences again. And if he does appear of offences again, time ill, then Philip Hobbs needs sectioning. Right, so we go on to the 120 where Philip Hobbs won the Sir Peter O'Sullivan handicap chase. So a hat was he wearing? I'm going to say, did you get did you get a big Russian hat as a prize? But Zanza basically, I, I went into bat in that race um, with a with a few with a few bets, and my stumps were all over the place. Come at the end, and and Zanza's the type of horse. He's that type of horse that I kept backing last year, putting him up in big races. I said, this horse is ready to win. He'd been a wanker for a long time and then suddenly decides, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I think he was still a wanker because he fucked everything up for us, didn't he? 
<laughs> don't, don't you find Hobbs is one of those yards just never ever get right, never get a handle on them. I don't know if it's me, probably is me, but it's one of those stables you never quite get to, to, to sort of get inside his head as to what he's thinking. You, I can never read that yard at all. Everything I bet of his is either is tailed off and then he'll then he'll bounce back the following race with the winner. It's a bizarre yard, I think. It is. He, he's he's one of them. He's a bit in and out. He's, he's obs, and I think I think you need to be on uh, back in the, that yard when when he's in um, and not out. But he's it, it, like he, he's not he's not a favourite yard of mine. He's like you said, Chris. It, 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 it's one of them where you just think mm, you know you can see a few disappointing from his yard all the time. But like I don't believe he he has them run to a consistency <laughs> of some other yards, maybe. And Mrs. Um, Mrs. Been on Twitter. Oh, he's missing. Yeah, she was crackers, wasn't she? <laughs> yeah, she, 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 she was, yeah, defending everybody, wasn't she, in racing? And then I think then she sort of came off the Twitter, I think, and she deleted her account, I think, from memory. This, this, this is the problem in it, you know. We, we all, we all, with the old Twitter. The, the thing is, if you blow smoke all the time, you eventually get get called on Twitter, you know, you, you, you can't really do it, can you? You, you? You're defending the indefensible to the racing community that kind of know what's going off uh, half the time. Um, so it, it's, like, it's like it's like the Iraqi foreign minister, the, the American troops are not... Rally. Yeah, they're not invading yeah, by... Nothing uh, to see here. Yeah. yeah nothing um, to see here. We're doing well. We're, yeah, we're destroying race, the Yankee yeah. imperialists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Uh, we'll go on straight on to the uh, Coral Gold Cup because I want to cover some races at Navan today, which I thought had some really interesting pointers. I thought it was good racing at Navan today. And uh, Le Milos, uh won the race in, well, a little bit controversial circumstances, chaps, because we can talk about this. As in, Harry Skelton uh, received a £2,900 fine and a 14-day uh, ban for subsequent you excessive use of the whip, which the BHA didn't actually produce the number of times the horse was struck. Um, which, if you work out using the uh, the punishment table, <laughs> punishment table, it works out at eleven. So he's he's hit it eleven times. Now I think there's some confusion with some of our our punters on Twitter and various punters. Let me get when when the when the whip rules are brought in properly in January where or in February whenever they do it eighth of Jan said the producer this the punishments will be stiffer for the incumbents as in more fi- higher fines and bigger disqualifications etc. But what's confusing punters is you won't lose your money like if a horse wins the race and it's got whipped fifteen times they aren't going to chuck it out and then you're not going to get paid. It's not, you know, they literally look at they look at they look into it during racing, and they decide, and then they can take the prize money off the owners. I think I, I think that's it really. I, th- I think that's the right decision, John. Chris, you can't have that in bed, yeah. can you? You cannot have that. No, in bed. Christ. It'd be riots. Yeah, but Imagine F O T Bs would be slung through the fucking glass, wouldn't they? If you're yeah. chucking out winners on whip, you know, you'd have civil unrest. So I think that's got to be a good decision, John. I did a quick count up and he hit it ten times from the second lap to the narrative and of course doing it more than seven of it. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Didn't we make a mistake though, John, when we went down numbers room? Massive mistake. Couldn't it, we use common sense? Well we haven't it, 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 <laughs> he didn't try to apply common sense with BHA skill, didn't it? But <laughs> um, yeah, I mean I think once you start with the numbers, you paint yourself into a corner. This is what they've done. And now you're on, not just on strikes, it's on strikes. Well, it's going to be on strikes in the backhand position, isn't it? Yeah. Which is more of a slick than a strike, let's be fair. But it's uh, not meant to hurt, is it? So what difference? They keep saying, oh, well, it's... Exactly. So well, the pro cush doesn't hurt. So, I mean, yeah, take, no. you could take a fucking run-up, couldn't you? Well, yeah. didn't, didn't the BHA former um, uh, chief executive Nick Rust take the pro cush? I think he took it to York once, and he started bashing himself on the hand with it, and, in, <laughs> and inviting <laughs> and inviting race goers to bash it on the hand with it to see. I wish yeah. I had that man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, so, 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 in one, in one, in one, guys, they're trying to portray the whippers. Well, it, it doesn't hurt. And then in another one, the same. Well, 
we've gone down a numbers route. Well, it does hurt because if you hit them too many times, well, that's bad. Mm. Which and the problem is you go, you go down the numbers route and that's going to get less, isn't it, over so time? It's going to come down. Yeah. 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 Imagine the outcry if they say all of a sudden it doesn't hurt. We've decided to let him eat it thirty times. Yeah. You know, I mean, what a fucking petter and animal head going to say to that? Yeah. 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 Barbarism. You know? yeah. By by using numbers, they literally are like you say on a on a on a time bomb in terms of right. It's going to be eight, then six, yeah. then five. But it's then, the visuals. It's the visuals, though, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, don't worry, look, it doesn't look good. You know, whatever you call it, people still regard it as a whip. You're never yeah. going to change that. It, it's a whip. Members of the public regard it as a whip, not a pro kush. And I suppose visually, you know, the narrative is, you know, we don't want to see horses beaten for punters to, you know, have their 50p each way on. So yeah, that, that, it's a thin end of the wedge. It'll, it'll, it'll soon come down to nothing, I'm sure, eventually. It, it will because they're already using words like safety. Appar- apparently, if a if a crack of the whip is administered due to safety reasons, then it's not counted. So, so the the fact that they're using words like the word safety, I, I, I then think that that's that's a word they'll bring in to like say, well, this is before the, the turtle ban of the whip, uh, right? There'll, there'll be there'll be three cracks allowed, but but only un, only one for encouragement purposes and two for safety or something like that. You know, we're going to get to ridiculous circumstances with these rules. Everyone can see it. I mean, I mean, the, the point is that I mean, people sat at the side watching the race. I've absolutely no idea whether a horse is running for the stick or not. No. It's entirely up to the jockey. And that, that's where it ought to be, <laughs> the owners, really, because unless it looks like out and out abuse, we could never have got involved in this, you know. I mean, where do you think Piggott would have served his sentence after the minstrels, Darby or Roberto's? Absolutely. You know, I mean, he'd have been in the scrubs, wouldn't he? He wouldn't have just been suspended. Well, well I mean, this is in the day when the whip was a whip as well. Yeah, um, that's it. I mean, it was a bloody red lump of whalebone he was using. Yeah. But that said, if you look back at his ride on, say, Ribeiro, and he, he beat Canterbury, he shot Ed in the ledger in bad ground, he never picked the stick up once. So you know what he was doing with the bloody thing? I think that's it. I, th- I think most jockeys are are quite good. At working out what a horse runs for, I've seen horses run faster for when the whip whips put down, and I've seen yeah. other horses run faster, you know, for a bit of encouragement. It's, it's as if to say some some actually thrive off punishment, you know. Just, <laughs> I'm going all red tube here, um, <laughs> you know. So you, you get where I'm coming from. The, the, it, it's oh, well, well, he was very quick to put it down. He said that one was curly enough. Yeah. yeah. But is that's because the people running the sport have no faith in the participants. What they should have done is stood up and say, look, jockeys are in the main experienced horse people. They know, uh, you know, what, 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 what works for a, for a particular animal. And you've got to have faith in the people that are participating in the sport. But instead, you know, those things are disregarded and they just sort of count out to external pressure. It's yeah. just another example, isn't it? Yeah, yet again, no love or respect for the sport or the people participating. Is it, no. isn't, it, isn't it going to make the game sort of like a breeding game, especially weaker, for maybe sires produce more like, you know, boats that need a fair bit of riding? It will be hard to call what's going to make a sire because you won't, you might not know what's actually being carried out on its shield, for want of a better expression. Thanks to our list of down for that. Um, because you, you you don't really know what horses have been absolutely have to reach to the bottom of their reserves, do you? where some have gone to stud and you know for a fact that they've, they've, they've really left it out on the track, haven't they? You, you know, and you can have confidence that a lot of their offspring have done the same, whereas now you know, I mean, you could end up with something going to stud that will chuck a load of soft bastards. Well, the, the the other thing as well, like like Menizier uh, said on a, on a, on a podcast with us, um, he said that you know who, the problem is now with with stallions and breeding is that because of the lack of honesty on the in the honesty box with with the you don't know if they bled the wind the wind went you know, at any point because they'll never declare very rarely will they ever declare a wind up or a, a tongue tie with a 
you know, as I was on the time, but you know, uh, you know, or any kind of sort of like anti bleeding medication, like with any any of the top Coolmore horses or, or Gandolfin horses. So the problem is, you don't know what vices certain sires had, John. Absolutely, you, you know, it, it is going to become a, a fairly tricky game, especially for people with limited numbers of road mares. You know, they're going to have plenty of stallions to choose from, but you know, if you're going to get two or three falls on the ground every year, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be hitting and hoping, really, would you? No. Okay, Navin today. I, 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 I was interested in this this card today. I thought there was some um, uh, definite pointers. Uh, for the season ahead, uh, including the festival. The 1250, uh, the winner of that, the uh, Willie Mullins Grange Clare West, would have would have caught everyone's eye in his demolition in the two and a half mile maiden hurdle. And, and he's been quoted at 10 to 1 for the Ballymore and Supreme. I, 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 I think more Ballymore than Supreme on what I saw. However, the 120 saw the very highly touted uh, in the Monksfield, the high, very highly touted American Mike for BFG get beaten comprehensively really in the end by Dawn Rising and that was running a four seconds faster time uh, than the impressive range Claire West so I would say that the Monksfield is very very strong form and the one that came down at the last of Noel Meads, Affidale Fury had, had got American Mike beaten and I, I genuinely believe that while Dawn Rising has won well in the end that horse picked up the pieces from American Mike and Affidale Fury battling and really going a good a good lick. And in the end, Affidale Fury had beaten American Mike off at the last. So American Mike, while people would be disappointed, I still think it's very strong form. If that race is four seconds faster than Grange Clare West, that that obviously took the eye, won by 13 lengths, but was four seconds slower. Couldn't argue with any of that. Yeah. Well, that's the weird thing. Right, so... Affidale Fury is quoted at 25 to 1 for the Ballymore. Dawn Rising is quoted at 12 to 1 for the Ballymore. Well, in a two runner race, Dawn Rising cannot beat Affidale Fury. Cannot beat him. The only one problem you've got is before you start running and taking the 25s, which does look big. Noel Mead, obviously terrible at Cheltenham, 3% strike rate, doesn't have, you know, tends to avoid runners there if he can, probably. And he probably might swerve and. Cheltenham with it, so I, I wouldn't even thought he might be thinking about Cheltenham with it. But Affidale Fury is a serious horse, uh, but he's had an hard race there. That that was a really hard, you know, gut, balls on the line, guts out race. And I would say if anyone's backing Affidale Fury, I, I don't even think I'd like to see this out at Christmas. I, I, I'd like to see them just be patient with that. Maybe bring it out um, in the new year sometime. Give it plenty of time after that because that was that was quite a battle. Uh, between him and American Mike. The Bar One Racing Troy Town was one of the big dog. The big dog. I mean, amazing scenes at Navan today. The, the, the thing what I, I like about Irish racing is they do exactly what we don't do, right? Which is not too much of it. <laughs> yeah. Not, not too much racing. So you saw the crowd at Navan today. It was a good card. Some really good horses running in terms for the future. And it was a real good crowd, good crack, you know, all the old cliches, busy betting ring. And that's what the old British Isles used to be like, you know, like like a, a real bouncing betting ring. And I think that's what got me about Navin today, that I looked in the crowds and looked at the, the atmosphere. And I, thought, I thought it was brilliant. And fair play to the Irish for that, because that's what uh, good meetings are about and what we should try to do more on Sundays as well and put proper racing on. Um, but nevertheless, and this is the worrying thing, chaps, while we're going down the line of big court bookmakers, and you've only got to look at tomorrow's fair to see that, they've slipped nine race cards in <coughs> on the all-weather. So you've two two all-weather cards tomorrow, uh, Wolverhampton and Kempton, and both have got nine race cards. Now, this 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 has gone in by stealth, hasn't it? This 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 was when in the lockdowns. So oh, we'll have more races at one card because you know, so you don't jockeys don't have to switch meetings. Safety, health and safety. You know, right? So now they've they've not just got eight races. They've got nine. Races. Let, let's have nine. This is like going. It's going down the ground gutter, isn't it? You know, th- this does not attract people to to bet bet on the sport you know like navin today put on a great card it was good racing saturday to be fair for for british racing you know like plenty of 
no 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 reason to complain whatsoever. But this is where big corp get their teeth and in, in, into the industry. What like you know, full of nine race cards, mostly scrap. You know, mostly not the sixties, not the sixty five. But that's where the horse population is, John, because we're selling all the good horses abroad. This is what we're left with, isn't it? You know, I mean, this just illustrates perfectly the steady decline in this sport in this country, and the BHA continue to sit on their hands and do nothing. But but the, the BHA here, right? I mean, they they, they I mean, it's clear it's clearly bent. It's like the nine rate, it's the media rights money. What well, they get paid per race to to stick a race on, so they're sticking more races on. And, and all right, people will argue. Uh, trainers, owners will argue and say. Well, it's nine race cards, but they're filling the cards, right? There's, there's 12 runners, 12 runners, 12 runners, you know, 11 runners, seven runners. You know, it, it's filling the cards, which I, I get that. But the point is, though, how do you get, like, say, a, a person interested in racing to bet on 0 to 60 races or 0 to 55 races? You don't. It's not going to happen. People simply aren't asked. There's a fairly interesting race tomorrow at Kempton. But you've got three, yeah, two of them coming back from the layoffs there that people would be interested in. Those are going to be better until the last minute, you know, and say what's drifted out from two to one to seven to two and things like that, you know? Yeah. Nah, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the, the need to cut these fixtures desperately and, and make racing some sort of treat for people again because this overkill is just killing it. Well, just look at the, the the crowd today for David. I, I just thought that was that was bumper and 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 again. But I think the the, the people that that bet on the sport, and the people that are interested in the sport, again, they're just forgotten about, especially in this country because this is all about big corp. It's big corp. It's how to. I mean, they they don't let make no mistake. They would want racing 10, 10 a.m. first race. 8 p.m. last race. Am I right, Chris? Yeah, I think I just think the whole thing is just so depressing. It is, it is betting shop fodder, and because we've talked about it previously, there's no long-term strategic vision for the for the sport because the the, the people running the sport are there for relatively short periods of time. And so their priority is to make sure that they don't fuck up too badly on their watch before they move on. And, and, and that's what's lacking. You, you know, this whole kind of uh, race to the bottom, I think it c- can only spell bad news for the sport. I mean, you know, people are not going to be interested going forward in, in a, a relentless diet of midweek rubbish. They're just not. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the commercial environment for betting is very competitive. There's lots of different things people can bet on, you know, different sports. And, uh, and racing has got to got to step up its game if it's to retain you know the, the punters it's already got let alone attracting new ones but then but then some will argue and some will say well it's a monday at the end of the day and uh if we can get as much betting reviewing as possible from whoever's betting on it on a monday then then why not and owners and trainers will say well my horse has got more chance of a run there's, there's lots of people yeah in, i mean in, I, I, I get i get <coughs> that i mean i get that and and you know and that that sort of speaks to the general quality of bloodstock isn't it i mean you're absolutely right trainers and owners do want to see their you know moderate animals get a run irrespective of whether it's on a you know monday at kempton or a you know tuesday somewhere else but 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 ultimately i just don't see how the product that's presented at the minute is going to be attractive to, to you know the so-called hordes of new betters that we're told you know that, that racing depends on attracting you know kind of new new entrants to the sport you know sort of the the daily betting shop habituees yeah that they're, they're going to bet on raindrops down a window pane but i can't <laughs> see younger people you know going to be attracted by pretty much average fare that, that that's sort of indistinct from each race i mean you, you you looked at the race with the sound off and you didn't know what you're looking at one race looks like another doesn't it certainly <laughs> on the all weather you know you, you, they're, they're pretty much of a muchness so if you are genuinely interested about attracting new people to the sport then you've got to make it attractive for them you know that, that that's you know the, the bha's logic out of its own words so I, I don't see how that jars with attract uh, uh, sort of meshes should i say with attracting new people to the sport they're not going to be interested in betting on crap in the week are they no it's it's it's, it's certainly mundane stuff uh, but i mean obviously there's different views on that what what do you think listeners yeah. is, is it is this the right way to go are we going down the graham route where we're just gonna have 
you know, like we end up with three all weather meetings every day in the winter and, and just and just ten race cards and just absolute fodder. No one's bothered. And then so we start the first race at ten AM and finish at eight PM. It's not good. It's not a good look for me, but where do you stand on that? Okay, going on to Japan. They kill things that we like, but Ryan Moore. He's a Japan Cup ride. Got some uh, very, very good plaudits uh, in the media. Uh, some even said it was one of the best rides they'd ever seen. So I thought I'd better watch this. So I watched the race several times just to make sure I'd not not missed missed missed, missed, a, missed a, an issue. And to me, I think if I'd have been a, just an average jockey, John, I'd have won it. I would think so. Um, I think he was on much the best horse. I mean, he's finished the race nearly on the bread. Yeah. Burst through there and, and looks as though he won it pretty easy. I think if he hadn't won, you'd have been quite annoyed. He'd got himself in such a situation that he, he had to wait for gaps. Well, imagine imagine one of our followers, Golf Club. Let's say he'd have been on it and he, he'd have not <coughs> got the gap and got beat half a lane. Oh, Every gap would have got beat, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I look for any sort of special sort of like, uh, I don't know, like kind of vision. Like, right, do I do I take this gap or that gap? He didn't move position, really. He just kept it same path, about three path. And things opened up for him in, in one bit. And then he just switched once to two path. That was it. And he, away he was gone. I, I didn't see anything special about it. It was just, it, it, was, it looks an exciting finish because obviously it's a, it's a fast late finish, but... Mm. Didn't get, didn't get, didn't get all this uh, oh, an amazing ride. Just, just that's Ryan being Ryan. I think. Yeah. Interesting comments from uh, Ollie and Tom, the, uh, the 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 racing happy couple, obviously riding out in Japan at the moment. And what they said about the ground out in Japan, they said that it's the quickest they've rode on, really quick, right? But absolutely safe. No, absolutely no, you know, didn't feel the horses weren't letting themselves down. It didn't feel, you know, which. Kind of then makes us scratch our heads uh, with that with the state of ground we seem we seem to produce it. And interesting, watching Nick look this morning, Oliver Sherwood also said and backed up some of John's comments. Whether he might listen to John, who knows? Um, on the show, okay. Oliver Sher, Oliver Sherwood, who knows? But he said that in his experience, he felt that more horses came back with problems and niggles and twists from running on false ground because you know patchy ground he says that's the worst ground the 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 ones where they, they've been watering and it's and basically it's in some places it's tucked some places it's not it's you know it's it's flicking the top off and john's john has maintained this on on our show for well since we started and it, and it, and that's it I, I i think i think the problem is though john we're in a position now it's like prescott said it's irreversible isn't it Point is as well, we will never ever ever have any stats that prove no. false grounds dodgy because they'll give the going as good to firm, then there might be injuries, so the injury stats go up. And you don't know whether it's been well watered, over watered, under watered, or what. If you're not going to differentiate, your stats are absolutely meaningless. And all you can go on then. Is anecdotal evidence from trainers like Oliver Shithwood there and people that know their horses and say, well, he was going along all right, he's a patch of false ground, he couldn't put himself right and he's done a tendon, you know. Well, well that's it. For, yes. every horse, for every horse that comes back, because the, the other argument is that, like, you get Endo and uh, if I had a run constitutional on, on that, uh, I'd, I'd have injured him. He'd, mm-hmm. he'd, he'd have been well, injured at Ascot. I mean, that is mental. I mean, I mean, I mean, the the thing is as well. That's the argument though they use that firm ground will jar them up. Which I I, I get that that, it, that yes to a degree. If you're running a horse on firm ground, there's a higher chance that the no, horse. I mean, will... When you watch that horse move, though, I mean, crazy to listen to the trainer. You'd think his knees were hitting his fucking ears, wouldn't you? When he runs. Yeah, and then there's firm ground, and then there's firm ground. I mean, you know, the the the, the, the ground that. That, that uh, Constitution Hill was pulled out on last week isn't by any stretch of the imagine, imagination what you call firm, is it? It might just be firmer than he wanted, but it wasn't un- necessarily, um, you know, unsafe no. or, or like a road. Not that I could see anyway. It, it so, was slow. It, it was slower ground than the, the ground he won on at Cheltenham when it when he. When there he, you go. So it, it, it was slower. 
Um, that was that's official. Even though it's he'd, he'd say it wasn't. Like I said to Lydia, it's not you know it's it's not good to stop yeah. it ever. You know that, this is what we're dealing. Yeah. With. The fact that so Ollie and Tom go out in Japan, ride ride for the first time on Japan's turf. Say Phew, this is quick, but then felt nerve. You know, they, they, they felt it was fine. The, the horses were fine on it. And that, that's the thing. So they, they'd get the feel from the horse. I just think that's what we've done. We've, we've gone down a path of uh, whether that's, like you say, the, the Namby Pamby, the, the Nanny State, the, right, oh, you know, we can't whip them. We can't, you can't run them on, can't run them on quick. They might break down. And I think we've gone down that route. And I, I think, I think that's, that's been happening for a while. And whilst we've been critical of Clark's on the show, I kind of realise now that the Clarks are under a lot of pressure, and it's clearly from the trainers because that's what we've learned this year. That it, it, even though we can have some effects and, and criticise the Clarks and say, "Why are you putting this much water on?" It's, they're clearly under pressure. You've got people like Henderson and that saying, "Well, we're not, we're not going to run." Gosden will say, "We're not going to run." You know, yeah, it's, it's group think, isn't it? It's, it, it, it's sorry, sorry to interrupt, but it is group think, isn't it? You've got sort of, you know, the two preeminent trainers under the individual codes, Gosden and Henderson, who who led the led the way in in sort of pulling horses out, and, and sort of the in quotes lesser trainers all follow suit. You know, they're not thinking for themselves. I think as well. You know, if someone of Gosden's stature says the ground is unsafe, then ergo it must be unsafe or too firm. And so I think you know people just follow the lead of people who are you know, preeminent in the sport rather than thinking for themselves. Indeed. John, do you, do you think smaller trainers should go to the uh, uh, John Gosden elocution lessons camp? Wouldn't be a bad idea, would it? Because I think <laughs> the posture you talk and the more clearly you talk, you, you certainly do have that aura of authority, don't you? And uh, I suppose it helps if you've got a few MPs on the payroll as well. Well, there is that. I mean, yes, there's the old old bungs for, for for Johnny G and, and his missus. What 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 did, what did Johnny G give uh, uh, Matt Bamcock? Was it ten grand? Right, we're gonna cut the lot to ten. Oh, interesting. Yes. Gosden's um, voice reminds me of those sort of old-fashioned um, teach yourself English tapes that for, for foreign students, you know, like sort of bingle bangle bungle. I'm so happy in the jungle. Yeah. Know, repeat it's that kind of that kind of tone he's always got i think he'd have a, a good career sort of you know doing voiceovers i think indeed before we come on to the jimmy, jimmy lindley and the question of the week in other news i found out this week chaps that um uh, dan skelton's communications officer oh, fuck you, <laughs> you communications wow. officer communications yeah communications mm. well maybe he can't speak i don't know anyway She's called Tiggy Vale Titterton. Ah, oh, piss off. Oh, I'm, not that's not, I'm not kidding. I'm not. That's a get up. That's a get I'm up. Not. It's got to be. I'm not. That's a get up. I'm not. Tiggy Vale Titterton. Tiggy Vale Titterton. This is so she can't be found on social media. And her yeah, hat. exactly. <laughs> Straight yeah. up. That is Dan Skelton's communications officer, Tiggy Vale Titterton. Has she got yeah. an OnlyFans account? I bet she has. <laughs> you know, <turn> on <laughs> yeah, we goose okay. that rode in that uh, jockey's race. It's a uh, good one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, goose. Exactly. It's oh. Tiggy and goose. Anyway. Uh, I wonder what comprehensive school she went to. Like, that's comprehensive. Yeah. She's, uh, yeah, lovely pair of hands. Anyway, onto yeah. lovely, uh, onto lovely pair of hands. Uh, we've got one that uh, an actual list, uh, a, a listener on Twitter sent in. And I've I've forgotten the name, uh, which I apologise, but you'll realise if you listen, it's you, mm. obviously. Um, it was it was on Southern last Tuesday, twenty second of November, uh, an horse called Misty Manny, trained by Peter Niven, who doesn't have many winners, uh, ridden by. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say so. So yeah, yeah, he don't have many winners. So, so I was thinking as soon as I got told this, thought this would be a load of rubbish. So then I watched it, and fucking hell, I mean, this was this was horrendous. I don't know what it was, but. It was sort of off the bridle turning in. So I thought, well, what's the to see here? So the horse then turns into the straight, actually comes, swings back on the bridle, absolutely cruising in behind them. And then on the run to the last, he gets clear daylight. And I'm thinking, well, this is just going to skirt past them. And he just, and he just like, he choked down on it. And he's like really pulling back on it hard into the last. And then just jumps off. Yeah. At the last. I've never sure seen anything like it, right? No. So. So I went to, and he's rode the horse before. So I went to watch him on his winning rides on the horse, and it was nothing, it, nothing like that, nothing whatsoever. It, to me, I don't know why 
But for whatever reason, I, I genuinely believe he didn't want that horse to probably even place that day. That's all I can say. And that's, that's an outlandish statement to say. But if you watch the race, you, you, all you got to do is watch it coming to the last. He's strangling the horse with one hand. Yeah. And then and then he and then he chokes down into the last, which every, you know every, all jockeys do on, when they're not off in the novice hurdles because that's what they do to lose momentum, lose revs. So he loses revs and then and then jumps off it as if to say, well, I might play to you. Yeah, um, it was extraordinary, wasn't it? And there was so many. What was fun, even more extraordinary, was the amount of people defending the ride. You know, oh, you know, how many winners have you ridden? You know, the horse jinked. No, it didn't. It didn't jink at all. I watched that several times. He just simply went out the side door, didn't he? Well, all I'll say is, all you've got to do is, for anyone saying that and saying that 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 you just this is just you know this is just bollocks. Watch yeah. watch the rides when he's won on it. And 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 yeah. I, I know Luke's Luke Scott's a good jockey. He is. He's, he's good for his seven. Yes. He was an amateur. He was he was he was he was a good amateur used by some big northern yards, and so I'm not having that. I'm not having the, no. that that it's just him. You know, no. There's something was very iffy about that. What if he if he's jumped off that though? He's had a fucking brain storm because if he jumped left, fair enough, because there was nothing behind him on the left, but he jumped into the path of other horses there. I know. Wait, well, it looked like he panicked, didn't it? I, I got the sense of panic, as you say. You know, I might place here. Fucking hell, what am I going to do? And well, that's it. Fell out. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, it, it looked very, very bad to me. Um, and that's not. I mean, I had no interest on the race. I, I didn't have any financial interest. In fact, I'd even watched the race uh, live, so I didn't even know about it until until a, a listener uh, told me about it. So thank you for that. So Misty Manny, watch out for that. And listeners. If you watch that back, let us know what you think. So, are we being ridiculous? Let us, listeners, let us know um, if you think that, that that's a case of, of, of us being uh, stupid in, on this, or, or, or do you agree with us that that, that was a uh, iffy to say the least? Uh, I, I would certainly be unhappy if I backed that horse that day. Okay, the week the week's best question for me uh, came from Goodwill Punting, and um, <laughs> he says, "Big Saturday flat card, lads. Who's on more drugs?" The horses, the crowd, or the jockeys? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. And this, of course, is, is on the back of Marco Gianni uh, joining the long list of especially apprentice, champion apprentice jockeys that seem to be uh, uh, on the list of uh, uh, having a good old snort the day before a card. Um, uh, John, any, any, any thoughts on it? Is it the horses, crowd, or jockeys? I think it's definitely the crowd because, I mean... <laughs> You got the new market. I mean, you need deep in the bogs, aren't you? You know, you need <laughs> with the wonderland, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the, the one thing, if it were at me, I'd say the horses, but. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but... Deep with the new market crowd. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, 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 new, a new market, definitely the crowd. The jockeys won't be far behind the. <laughs> Great question, Goodwill Punty. That sums us up for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Plenty to talk about, as always. And always give us your feedback and let us know what you think to any comments on the show and give us give us as much stick as we give. We, we enjoy it. That's all from us. We're back on Friday, as always, with the uh, punting show, trying to give you some winners. Bye for now. <laughs>